Let's look at the next topic in our book. Now that we know how volume, mass, and density work, let's look at buoyancy. Uh, buoyancy, by definition, is an upward push or force exerted on a liquid. The greater the density of the liquid, the greater its ability to push upward. And we have uh, three terms that apply when it comes to buoyancy. We have, if the force of buoyancy upward, which is the yellow force arrow, is stronger than the force of gravity downward, we say it is positively buoyant. If the force of gravity down on an object and the force of buoyancy pushing up is the same, it will hover, and we say it's neutrally buoyant. Neutrally buoyant. And, of course, if its weight, which is the force of gravity, is greater than the buoyant force, which is the upward push of the liquid, then we say it's negatively buoyant. So three terms that apply based on the forces that act on an object in water. Uh, so the other thing we want to consider is why do some objects float while other objects sink? For example, a coin sinks because its weight, the force of gravity, is more than the amount of water it displaces. An aluminum ball floats because it contains air within its folds. Air weighs less than water, so the ball weighs less than the air. Good old Archimedes was an ancient Greek scientist who discovered that floating objects are supported by an upward force called buoyancy. <laughs> he discovered this while running uh, naked through the streets, yelling, Eureka, Eureka. Buoyant force is equal to the weight of the liquid that the force displays outward. So, let's look at this again. When we place an object in water, the fluid, due to its density, will push upward on an object. The greater the density, the greater that upward push or buoyant force. Uh, so let's look at this block of wood, and it's floating right now in pure, fresh water. Which one of these pictures, A, B, C, or D, would best represent what happens to the block of wood if we put it in salt water. Well, what do we know about salt water? Salt water has more particles in it than pure water, and its density is greater. Therefore, its buoyant force will be greater, and it will push the block of wood up higher. So, which picture would represent what would happen? Picture D, the block of wood would be pushing higher. It would be floating higher up in salt water than pure water. Uh, so this picture is just showing you uh, displacement. So when an object is put into water, it displaces an amount of water equal to the volume of the object. And the weight of the water in newtons tells us what the buoyant force is of the liquid on the rock. The weight of this water. So if we took a force meter and measured the force of gravity or the weight of the water, that would be equal to the buoyant force that the liquid is pushing up on, on the rock. Now, we know a rock sinks, so this buoyant force would be less than the force of gravity pulling down, or the weight of this water, which is equal to the buoyant force, would be less then the force of gravity down. Here's another way to find how much a liquid is pushing up on an object. Take the weight of an object, let's say we have a rock here in air, and let's say it's 35 newtons. Then take the rock and submerge it into the liquid. Now what do you notice? The force meter goes down, which means the water's helping hold it up. And now it says 9 newtons. The difference between these two tells you how much the water pushed up on the object. 
So 35 minus 9 would give us the buoyant force of the water on the rock. So what would that be? 26 newtons is the buoyant force of the water on the rock. Uh, the upward push of a liquid changes depending on the shape of the object. If we can trap more object air in the object, then that will help us. But it also, the, the more water that's displaced, the more upward push of the buoyant force. For example, this block, which is 500 grams, which equals 5 newtons, and this block, okay, which one would sink? Probably the block that is pushing away or displacing less water. So here's Archimedes' principle again. So if we, uh, for an object that sinks, the volume of the object is equal to the water it displaces. So let's say we put this in here and it goes to there and it displaces this amount of water. If we take the weight of that water in newtons, that's equal to how much water has pushed upward or is equal to the buoyant force of the water. Let's look, sink or float. So if the bottle is like this, its weight is one newton, its bo the buoyant force of the liquid on it is 10 newtons. So it sink or it floats. Now if the bottle, we add some rocks to the bottle, now the force of gravity, which is the red out arrow, is bigger, 9 newtons, but the buoyant force of the liquid is still 10 newtons. So it still floats. But if we add more rocks, now the weight of the jar with the rocks is 12 newtons, and of course the buoyant force of the liquid is still 10, so it is negatively buoyant or sinks neutrally, not quite neutrally buoyant, neutrally buoyant would be 10 newtons, and then positively buoyant. So here's Archimedes' principle again. Archimedes stated that the buoyant force on a submerged object is equal to the weight of the fluid that it pushed away or displaced. So here's the rock, 0.67 newtons. In water now, the force meter says 0 0.4. So remember, we could just subtract these two to find how much buoyant force is pushing, but he also said, so the rocks in the water, it displaces some water, whatever the weight is of this water, which is the difference between 0.37 and 0.1, that's 0 0.27, that's the weight of the water, that's equal to how much buoyant force is pushing up on the rock, 0 0.27 newtons. So we could have found it here, the difference in air based on the difference in water, is also 0 0.27. Uh, don't forget density is related to buoyancy. So if we put all these substances into a big graduated cylinder, what order would they float? Well, the least dense is the motor oil, so it would be on top, motor oil, then vegetable oil, would be there, then water with red food coloring, then glycerol would be there, and on the bottom would be the corn syrup. Let's look at this video clip on buoyancy. The story so far. The word volume comes from the Greek for envelope and refers to how much space an object envelops. The word density comes from the Greek for compact and refers to the amount of mass that is compacted in a given volume. And now, buoyancy. Are you strong enough to pull up that anchor? Haul away then. While the anchor's in the water, you can just manage to lift it. But once it's out of the water, 
it seems to weigh quite a lot more. It's as if the anchor had lost weight while it was in the water, as if there were someone under the surface trying to push it up. But mermaids only exist in our imagination. So what's going on here? Well, drop the anchor into the ocean again, and we see that as a matter of fact, it's the water itself which is pushing up on the anchor. But since the anchor is denser than water, the force of gravity pulling it down is greater than the force of the water pushing it up. So, it sinks to the bottom. On the other hand, when you jump in after the anchor, since you are less dense than water, the force of gravity pulling you down is smaller than the force of the water pushing you up. So you rise to the surface. But if we consider something which has the same density as water, that fish, for example, we see that it can stay floating right where it is, neither sinking to the bottom nor rising to the surface, because the force of gravity pulling it down and the force of the water pushing it up balance each other exactly. All this is common everyday experience and is in fact a law of nature. Let's see how it works. Here are three cubes, one of metal, one of cork, and one of plastic. They all three have exactly the same volume. But the metal cube weighs 10 newtons and is denser than water, whereas the cork cube weighs one newton and is less dense than water. And the plastic cube weighs two newtons and has exactly the same density as water. Now here are three water jugs, each full to the brim, and each with a Newton balance beside it. Imagine that we can cast a magic spell on each cube, and make it sit still in the middle of each water jug. In order to make room for itself, each of the cubes has to push aside or displace its own volume of water. So the water overflows. And since all the cubes have the same volume, they all displace the same volume of water, so that these volumes equal these volumes. Now notice how much the displaced water weighs, two newtons in each case. And here is where the law of nature we mentioned comes in. When an object is immersed in a liquid, the weight of liquid it displaces is equal to the force which is pushing up on that object. So there's a force of two newtons pushing on each of the three cubes. But remember that the metal cube is being pulled down by a force of gravity of 10 newtons, the cork cube by 1 newton, and the plastic cube by 2 newtons. This is why if we remove the magic spell that's holding the cubes in the middle of the water, the metal cube will sink. The cork cube will rise to the surface. And the plastic cube will stay floating right where it is. Since things which float in the sea to help sailors navigate are called buoys, this law of nature is called the principle of buoyancy. Objects immersed in a liquid are buoyed up by a force equal to the weight of the liquid displaced. It's buoyancy which stops that boat of yours from sinking. Provided, of course, that you watch out for the buoys put there to warn you about the dangerous reefs. Ooh. Ha, ha, ha.